Welcome to our walkthrough of creating courses in your SkyPrep platform. We'll be covering the whole process from start to finish. This video also assumes you've already added material and created assessments, so if you haven't yet or don't know how to, check out the videos in the description below. To create a course, click on Teaching, then on Courses. Use the Create Course button on the right to name your course, then click on the final Create Course button. If you aren't in it already, make sure you're in the Course Content tab. Here you have several different methods of adding items on this page. The first uses the Add Items to this Course drop-down menu. Using the menu, you can add material that you've already uploaded into the Materials section by selecting the Choose Existing option under the Materials heading. Assessments are added the same way, by choosing the Choose Existing option, but this time under the Assessments heading. Alternatively, you can opt to upload brand new material into the course or create a new assessment by using the Upload or Create New options. Uploading content using this method will also add it to the materials and assessment sections of your platform. You can also use the drag and drop area at the bottom of the page to quickly add files from your desktop into the course. Once added, you will see the materials and assessments appear at the bottom of the list of modules. If you want to change the order of the modules, simply click and drag on the cross-shaped icon on the right-hand side. Inside of a course, you can also create instructor-led training sessions. Click on the Add Items to this course drop-down menu and select either Add Webinar for an ILT that uses a webinar service or Add In-Person Training for a general one. If Add In-Person Training was chosen, on the pop-up, give the ILT a name and a description. Once finished, click Proceed to Adding Time Slots. If you selected Webinar, do the same, but also select which webinar service you are using. In the next pop-up, you'll be creating the first time slot. In Time Slot Description, use this field to provide information to your users about the time slot. Location is used to include any location-related information. If you chose the Other option for a webinar, this field will be replaced with a field for you to enter the link. The Start and End Time options determine when the time slots begin and finish. Clicking on these fields will open a calendar widget that allows for easy date and time selection. The time zone setting specifies which time zone the above date and time takes place in. Users with different time zones will have their ILT automatically converted to display the correct time. Capacity sets a maximum number of attendees for the time slot. Users will not be able to register if the capacity has been reached. Primary instructor is used to enter the name of the main ILT instructor. An attendance key is a password that users can enter to mark themselves as having attended the session. To add an additional time slot, click on Add Time Slot. This will create another time slot that users can join. A user will only need to attend one in order to have the ILT marked as completed. If you require a user to attend multiple sessions, you will need to create multiple ILTs, each with their own time slots. Once finished, you can click on Finish Adding Time Slots to add the ILT to your course. Alternatively, you can click on the blue arrow at the bottom right and start registering users yourself by clicking on Proceed to Registering Users. This will bring up a new pop-up that lists all of the available time slots. Click on Capacity to begin adding users. Use a drop-down to select Users to Enroll, then click on Register User. Once users have been added, you can change their status from Pending to Absent or Present if required, and you can also unregister them from the time slot if they were accidentally added. The bulk attendance dropdown will let you change the status for all users at once. Once finished, you can click on Back to Time Slot list in the upper left to go back to the previous page to select a different time slot. After all users have been registered, you can click on the X in the upper right of any panel to close the pop-up. You will then see the ILT show up in the course's course modules list. You can also create ILTs with time slots dated in the past. Go to Teaching, then Instructor-led Trainings. Select the course you want to add the ILT to, then go to Add Time Slot. Fill in the fields and select the date and time in the past, then select Create Time Slot. Now that you've added all of your content, you can enable Enforce Module Sequence at the top. This will force learners to take the course items in order from the top down. You can also click on the blue Edit button beside each module to access some additional customization options. Name renames a module in only this course. 
If the content is being used in a different course, the name in the other course will not be affected. Description adds a brief text description of the module. It will be visible at the top of the page when a learner views the content. Days until item unlocks sets the number of days until the item becomes available. Item available on sets a calendar date upon which the item will become accessible. If used in conjunction with days until item unlocks, this setting will take precedence. Time required to spend on item sets the minimum number of seconds that a user needs to spend viewing the module before it's considered complete. Only videos will have this setting applied by default, and if you want to enable it for any other file type, you will need to add the time yourself. If mandatory item is unchecked, that means the module does not need to be completed for the learner to pass the course. And finally, must be successfully completed to continue course is similar to enforce module sequence, but it is applied only to one module instead of all modules. If enabled, a user will need to complete the module before they can access any following modules. Clicking on general settings will allow you to apply different settings to the course. Course name lets you edit the name of the course that appears for everyone in the platform. Course active determines if the course is accessible to learners. If the course is not active, it will be hidden from the visible courses and users will not be able to see it. If making a change to an assessment, it is highly recommended to make all courses that contain the assessment inactive while changes are being made. The course image replaces the default course image with an image of your choice. Course category sets what the course is categorized under. This is purely for organizational and searchability purposes. In the introduction, any text you enter will be visible in the course portal, as well as in any enrollment or course purchase forms. Course video lets you include a video in your course portal, such as a course preview or summary. It'll be overlaid on top of the course image and will play once a user has clicked on it. Credits determine how many credits are awarded to the learner upon course completion. Additional registration fields determines what information fields a user will need to enter when enrolling in the course through the enrollment link. Course certificate will award a learner with a certificate of completion when they successfully pass the course. If there is more than one certificate available on the platform, you will see a drop-down menu allowing you to select the one you want to use. Validity length lets you enter the number of days a certificate is valid for. After the certificate expires, the user will be re-enrolled. For example, if you enter 365, users will be re-enrolled in the course 365 days after completion. Please note that the setting is not retroactive and will only apply to users that were enrolled in the course after the validity length was set. Early re-enrollment window is used to re-enroll users into the course before their certificate expires. For example, entering 14 will re-enroll learners into the course 14 days early, allowing them to be recertified before their certification elapses. Start date is a calendar date on which the course becomes available. End date, on the other hand, is a calendar date on which the course no longer is accessible, including to learners who have already completed the course. Alternatively, you can choose to have a soft deadline where users will see they're overdue but will still be able to access the course. If you prefer soft deadlines, just let your account manager know. Course length is the number of days that a user has in order to finish the course after they begin or are enrolled. Soft deadlines also apply here. Course contact email is the email display in the course portal. It defaults over to the email of the admin that created the course, but it is editable at any time. Course custom emails will open a text editor that also contains a placeholder that you can insert into your email templates. The text you enter into these fields will be inserted in place of the placeholders, allowing you to tailor the notification emails specifically for each course. Credits required determines the number of credits that a learner needs to have earned before they are able to access the course. Prerequisites work the same way except with course completions and not with credits. And finally, if you are on the premium or enterprise plans, Share Course lets you share the course with your other subplatforms by entering the domain together with the email of an admin on the receiving platform. We have now covered the basics of course creation. If you have any questions, you can always access your help center or contact your account manager using the button on the bottom right corner of your screen.